Hey everyone, welcome back to Mode Bespoke. I'm Atenas. Today we're going to be working on a tortilla bag. And this bag is for your tortilla, so after you cook them, you put them inside and it keeps them nice and toasty. And it also doubles as a pot holder. It's a quick and easy project to make, it doesn't require very much, and beginners can make it as well. Let's get started. need some cotton yarn for this project. Make sure it is 100% cotton. You're also going to be using a G hook and that is a 4.25 millimeter hook. So to start we're going to need to begin with a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around two fingers and then you're going to insert your hook into the loop that's between your fingers. Grab some yarn and pull that through. To tighten your slip knot just pull on the two threads of yarn. So we're going to start with a chain of 40 stitches and if you don't know how to make a chain stitch here it is how you're going to do it. So you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook and you're going to pull that through the loop on your hook. So there's one. We're going to do it again. So yarn over and pull through the hook. That's two. Yarn over and pull through and that's three. So you're going to need a total of 40 and this is for a medium sized bag. If your family's a fan of the really large tortillas, you might want to make a chain of 50 instead. So that'll fit larger tortillas in it. So I'm just going to keep making my chain until I have 40 stitches. So here we go. So here are 40 stitches. This is the front of our stitching. So you can tell because you can see the little V's. So you see these tiny V's? That means we're in the front part of the stitch. So it's the front part of our chain. We're going to be working on the back side. So turn your work around and you're going to see these little circles with this little bar in the middle. So the stitch is the bar. So that is what we're going to be stitching into. If this is a little too confusing for you, then just work in the front part of the stitching. We're going to start with a chain one, turn our work around and in the very first little uh, bar, which is the stitch, we're going to make a single crochet. So we're going to insert our hook into the stitch and then we're going to yarn over and pull our hook out of the stitch like so. Now you're going to have two loops on your hook. You're going to close your stitch by yarning over and pulling that through both loops. So we'll do it again. Here's the next one. Don't worry, I will zoom in here in a minute so you can see it better. But let's go into the next stitch. Like so, you're going to yarn over, pull through, and now you're going to have two loops on your hook. So you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops for a single crochet. So make a single crochet in every stitch of the row. For those that still require a little bit more assistance, here's the zoomed in version. So look for your stitch, so it's that little bar, insert your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull your hook out. There we go, our two loops. You just yarn over and pull through two. I'll do one more. So we insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, and then we yarn over, pull through both loops. So single crochet in every stitch until you have a full row, like so. So I finished my row, it's a complete row of single crochets. We're going to start row number two, which is where we're going to start our pattern, and we're just going to start with a chain one. And then we turn our work around, and we're going to begin our even moss stitch. So in this very first stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet. And to do that, you need to yarn over, and you're going to insert your hook into that first stitch. So we're always going to begin with a half double crochet. So you yarn over again and you pull your hook out and you're going to see three loops on your hook. So then you yarn over and you're going to pull through all three loops. And that is a half double crochet. The next stitch is going to be a slip stitch. So you insert your hook into the stitch and you yarn over 
and pull your hook out and then you're going to pass the very front loop, so the one closest to the hook part, so this first one, into your second loop. So you pull that first loop through the second loop, there we go, and that's a slip stitch. You're going to need another half a double crochet in the next stitch, so we're on stitch number three. So half double crochet, so there are three loops, and now we just yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we follow that up with a slip stitch. So we'll, we're alternating between half double crochets and slip stitches all the way to the end of the row. And this is going to be our foundation for our even moss stitch. So I'll just keep making half double crochet and follow that up with single crochets until I get to the last stitch and then we'll move on from there. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it and I'll see you again in a minute. Right, so we're at the end of the stitch, or at the end of the row, we're on our last stitch, there we go. If you don't end in a half double crochet, don't worry, it's okay, you can still finish in a slip stitch, it's not going to change your pattern at all, so you don't have to redo it. So just finish whatever stitch you need to end up on, just make sure you don't skip that last stitch. And now we're going to chain one, turn our work around, and we're going to start the even moss stitch again. So we start with a half double crochet in the very first stitch. So yarn over and there we go, our half double crochet. We're going to follow that up with a slip stitch. So something you're going to notice here on these rows is that you now have an extra loop. So you see this front little loop? Just ignore that one, that's what's going to give it its nice, um, the nice look to the even moss stitch. You're going to want to stitch into the top of the stitching. So when you turn your work sideways, you're going to see that V at the top. You want to stitch into the V. So that's the top of the stitch. That's where we want to stitch in the next few rows because we're going to make um, a total of eight rows of the even moss stitch. So I just wanted to show you that before we, we continue. So I'm just going to keep stitching here. It's going to be the same thing that we did the last row. So it's one half double crochet and then slip stitch and then half double crochet and a slip stitch. So I'll make a few more and that's how it's going to look. Keep working until you get to the end of the row. So you're just going to repeat the same thing over and over. Get to the very last stitch of the row. You're going to chain one, turn your work around and do it all over again. So you're going to do it six more times. So you need a total of eight rows. We have two rows right now. Make six rows and that's half double crochet, uh, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch. So work on that. Once you have your eight rows finished, we'll move on to the next part. So here are my eight rows and I just repeated the same thing I did over and over. So you always start with a half double crochet and then work your way through. So you can see four little diagonal lines. That means I've made a total of eight rows. And now we're going to start our next row with a chain one. We're going to turn our work around and this row is just a row of half double crochets. So in the very first stitch we make a half double crochet and in the next stitch we make a half double crochet. And in the stitch after that it is a half double crochet. So we're going to make a half double crochet in every single stitch of this row. So I will leave you to do that and I will see you here in a moment. You can pause the video if you need to, but I'll see you again in just a minute. All right, I finished my row. Now we're going to chain one and go to the next row. This next row is a row of single crochets, but you are only going to work a front loop. So if you turn your work to the side, you're going to see your little V's. You're going to work in the front loop of the V. So it's this one. This is the back loop. Ignore that guy. You just want to use this one in the front. And this one in the very, very front, don't even touch that one. So that's part of the design. So it's this little middle one, also known as a front loop. So we're going to start with just a single crochet. So go into your first stitch, go through the front loop only, like so, and then you yarn over and finish your single crochet. 
So here are our two loops, and then we yarn over, pull through both loops. The next stitch is also a single crochet because it's an entire row of single crochets. So make sure you go through the front loop only. The next one is also a front loop single crochet. And just keep working front loop single crochets until you get to the very last stitch of the row. So I finished my row of single crochets and what you're going to notice is that you have this nice little line so you get this nice little edge here. It's a little more visible on the other side, but you get it on either side and it just adds to the design. So that's what working in the front loop does uh, for the design. So now we're gonna move on to our next row with a chain one. Then we're gonna turn our work around and we're gonna make another row of half double crochets. Now this is just regular half double crochets. No front loop, back loop, nothing like that. Just straight half double crochets all the way to the end of the row. So for anyone who needs to see them, I'll show you a couple of half double crochets. So I'll leave the camera rolling for a second so that you can see what our next row is gonna look like. So I finished my row of half double crochets and we're gonna start with a chain one for our next row and we're gonna repeat the even moss stitch. So just like we did down here, we're gonna need a total of eight rows. However, our first row is gonna be the only different one. So this is the only row that you're gonna work as a front loop only, and that is so that we get another nice little edge to match the one that we did two rows ago. So we're gonna work at that very front loop. So you're just gonna start with a half double crochet, so you yarn over, insert your hook into that front loop, yarn over pull through and now we finish our half double crochet so there's the one now our next stitch is a slip stitch so just insert your hook straight into the front loop only yarn over and finish your slip stitch we move on to a half double crochet so we yarn over pull through all three we follow that up with a slip stitch so this is the only row we do this in. All the other rows, we're gonna, we're gonna crochet, I have to uh, half double crochet and slip stitches like you normally would. So instead of just using the front loop only. But it'll create a nice little edge to match the bottom of our, this little section. So these stitches are all made in such a way so that they're all reversible. So all you'll have to do is choose the side for your bag and then you'll be able to see the same design in the front or the back and you'll be able to use your bag a little bit longer so if you ruin one side you can just flip it inside out and you'll have a matching design the rest of the pattern is just a repetition of what we've done so as you can see we've just repeated these over and over so it's four repetitions of moss stitch so eight rows of moss stitch and then three repetitions of our half double crochet and single crochet rows so that's all there is to this pattern. Repeat that, um, like I said, four times for the even moss stitch, and then three times for the section where we did the half double crochet and single crochet. So here's what I mean with uh, about doing the rest of the rows the same. So I finished the previous row, so it's the front loop only row. See, it left that nice little edge. And now for the next row, I started with a chain one, and I'm gonna just start with my half double crochet again but I've gone through both sides of the stitch. So I've just worked the stitch like normal. So, so like you would normally work, but here I'll show you, it's easier to see with the half double crochet. So I've gone through both sides of the stitch. So both loops. So the next seven rows, because this is row number seven, so I guess the next six rows, so the, the remainder of this row plus the other six, I'm gonna work in this same way. So it's just a moss stitch, even moss stitch, all the way through for the next six rows. And then I'll repeat the center section, which is the half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet, and then repeat the even moss stitch. So remember, four repetitions of even moss stitch, three repetitions of the center, uh, the center part, which is the half double crochet, single crochet combo, until you have a square. So you will need two squares. So here is one of my squares. So as you can see, I did all four repetitions. 
Here's the other square because you will need two. It is going to be a bag. So to finish our square, I'm here at the very end. So we're going to start with the chain one, but let me get my hook back in. So, oh, well, I already have a chain one. So let me take this out and then I'll, I'll just start the row with you. So let's get everything ready. Here we go. We are going to start with the chain one and then we're going to turn our work around and we're going to make two rows of single crochets. So for anyone who's advanced enough, go ahead and just start with a single crochet in every stitch of the row, chain one at the end, and then repeat for another row. For everyone who's still learning, we're just going to work single crochets. So just insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over. We've got two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And we'll do the same in the stitch after that. So I'm just going to keep working here, making my single crochets. See, and it's gonna create a very nice and even edge to match the edge on the other side. So just keep working here. Now when you get to the end of the row, we're going to chain one. So here we're at the end of the row, chain one, turn your work around and do it all over again. So make one more row of single crochets. So I'll make a couple single crochets uh, so that I have a little bit of a length so that you can see how this row is gonna compare to the first row we did. So when we first started the project, we started with a chain one and then did a row of single crochets. So what we're doing now is creating the same edge on the other side so that both sides of our bag will match. So I'll do just a few stitches. I should have enough here so that you can see it. So there's the design. If I pull the other side up, here's the design on the other side. And if you put them side by side, they're pretty similar. So that's what we want on our edges. So I have finished my row and now we just have to weave in our ends. So for anyone who hasn't seen this before, just cut a nice length of yarn. Gonna give it a snip here and you're gonna need a uh, your yarn or tapestry needle. But first, we're gonna make a chain one and this will help us make a little knot at the end. So when you pull your hook out, you can just tighten it at the bottom and you have a nice clean knot. So here's my tapestry needle um, and we're just gonna thread this through. You can use a yarn needle, a tapestry needle, any needle you want so long as your yarn fits through it. So get that all threaded like so. And what you're gonna do when you weave in your ends is you're just going to sew on one side of your project and you want to run your stitches behind, so you wanna run your needle stitches behind your crochet stitches in such a way that they are hidden. And you also want to switch directions often. That will keep your work from unraveling. So even if you throw your items assuming you have a yarn that you can wash in the machine. But if you machine wash an item, it won't become unraveled. So sometimes even your little knots can loosen up. So when you weave in your ends, you kind of assure that that won't happen. So while I'm finishing this up, you will need to make a second square just like this one. So go ahead and repeat this once you're completely done. Remember you start with a chain 40 and go from there. And for those who want the written pattern, I do have the written patterns available on my blog. Check the link in the description box below. They are all posted for free, but if you would like to help support my work, you can also purchase them as well. All the information about the, the pattern is on the blog. Like I said, the link is in the description box below. So I finished weaving in my end, got this little piece left, so I'm just going to cut it off. And there we go. So you will have to weave in the other end as well. So where you started your chain, you have a little bit of thread left there too. So, so this end right here, you're gonna weave it in in the same way, but I'll let you do that on your own. So here's my square I have finished. As you can see, I've done all four repetitions and I've checked everything to make sure that it is how I want. Now you just have to decide what side you want to be on the outside and what side you want on the inside. Do that with both sides of your work and you're going to sew your item right side out. So pick the sides that you want on the outside and leave them on the outside and you're gonna line up your edges. 
So make sure that you pick the edges that you want for the top and the edges you want for um, the ones that you want the, to be the opened part. So I want this to be my open part. So it's going to, I'm not going to sew this down, but I'm going to sew all the other sides. So all three of my other sides are going to be sewed close. And I'm just going to use the same yarn that I used to um, crochet this item. That way I can hide my stitches easily. So cut a nice long length of yarn and you're going to need your yarn or tapestry needle again. So get that nice and threaded and we're going to get everything sewed together. So I'm going to line up my edges. Make sure that this is how I want to sew my item closed. And you're just going to grab your needle that has already been threaded. And I forgot to make a knot, so let's make a knot. So I'll just get to the end and then I'll wrap the yarn around my index finger and just twist it along my thumb and that just makes a nice little knot. I'm going to make my first stitch on the inside of the bag and only on one side. So just pick one of the squares and just make a stitch so that your knot's hidden on the inside of your bag and then line up your edges and let's start sewing. So the way I sew this is I go, I sew each side individually so I don't sew, my needle doesn't go through both sides if that makes any sense. So I just sew in from the outside to the inside of the bag on one square and then I go to the other square and do the same. So from the outside towards the inside like that and then I go and do the same thing on the other side. I may have gotten a really big piece of yarn. There we go. Okay, so here's the other side and I do the same from the outside to the inside like that. So I'll make a couple more stitches so you can see how it is that I'm sewing it. You can sew it however you want, so don't feel like you have to sew it this way. And sew three sides. So I'll finish this one, sew two more together and leave one side open for your tortillas. And that's it guys. So here is our little tortilla bag. So you can just put your little tortillitas inside your bag and they will stay nice and warm. So don't forget that this does double as a pot holder. So if you use it as a pot holder, use both sides simultaneously like so, so you don't burn yourself. If you have any questions about this project or any other project, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. I post videos every Thursday. And if you want to see more of my projects, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at mode.bespoke. You'll be able to preview some of the projects we're going to be working on here on YouTube. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It makes me feel super special when you do. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you all again next Thursday.